Hello and thank you for watching Guitar How To's. This glary Stratocaster copy. Let's give it the once over. All right, these are not criticisms at all. I actually enjoy these lower price guitars to some extent. Um, okay, first thing is the action's too high for me. Uh, the curve has a little bit of a bow in it. Uh, that's okay. I just generally like my neck straight. That's just me. I know that the nut is a little high. On my side, the slots are up a bit. I'm going to file them down uh, so they're closer to the first fret. Intonation is better, especially on this G. The G tends to get sharp if the nut is not cut close to the close to the frets. Uh, I don't know what kind of wood this is. It looks a little dusty. Uh, it's not. Um, the frets are smooth and they seem, you know, a bit on the uh, bigger side. That's great. Uh, pickups, uh, the only thing I noticed was this one's not in alignment with the rest of them. It's just too bad that this looks like the, it looks like the cutout needs to come down like just a hair. But, you know, again, you can't get too picky with some of these instruments. It's okay. It's not gonna, it's not gonna interfere with tone or anything like that. Don't worry about that. All right, we have, I didn't check out the electronics yet. I just assumed that everything works okay. Five-way position, five-way selector switch, of course. The uh, volume, tone, and tone. I'm not sure if this tone is just for the middle pickup or both pickups here. We'll find that out. Uh, the tremolo uh, seems uh, very, very stiff if I'm trying to do this manually. Uh, outside of that, everything looks okay. Got a couple of, you know, surface scratches on the guitar. I'm going to try to take them off with some polish at the end of this. Of course, I'll be removing the uh, plastic here, and I will take off the uh, pick guard just to have a look at the inside and uh, see how that uh, see how the wiring looks there. Uh, came across a couple of cosmetic things. It's a pretty deep scratch right here, and you can actually feel that with your finger. And over here on the edge, let's see. There's a dent. Right there. So uh, you can feel that. Here's what came with the guitar: uh, a strap, a pick, and now we have a uh, cable. We have the uh, tremolo arm, and we have somewhere in here. It's hard to see with the plastic sometimes. Let's see. Let's see on the other side. There they are, up in the uh, upper right-hand corner of the bag. Uh, we have the uh, the Allen wrenches to adjust the uh, relief on the neck, and also for the uh, small uh, little hex uh, screws right here uh, in the saddles. Uh, let's take a look at some of the things I'll be um, I set aside should I use them. Uh, this is a you know piece of foam from some packaging, some other product. I cut out the corner there to place this over the control so I can flip the guitar over. And not have to worry about the controls getting you know mashed up. Uh, cut out piece of cardboard. I'm going to use that for up here when I file the nut. No worries there. Uh, of course, a screwdriver. A couple of files. A couple of sets of files. Uh, oil. Uh, petroleum jelly. Some toothpicks. That will be for the tuners primarily. And what else we got over here? Magnifying glass. Sometimes you need that. Sometimes it's handy. 
A couple of cleaners. Uh, one of these is fine. You don't have to need both of them. Uh, these are for the pots. I'm going to squirt them while I'm, I have the uh, guitar open. Lemon oil for the neck. Change of strings. Not endorsing anybody here. This is just the things that um, I have uh, handy at the moment. Uh, Zymol, which is polish, and a couple of uh, uh, pliers set aside for uh, cutting, the, cutting and pulling the strings. A couple of magnetic uh, trays here for the uh, little screws. Loosen the strings and open up the guitar. Here we have a case where the screws are too far forward here. On some guitars you find these are all the way in, and that should not be the case. These should be backed off to, eh, I don't know, maybe about an inch or so to start out and uh, see how that goes. Some of this is going to be trial and error when I get new strings on. So I'm just going to rough this out for now. So I'm just going to back these off a bit, leave it at that, flip the guitar over, do some of the controls, get back over here, you know, get the new strings on and get back over here and adjust this. Leave the back plate of the guitar off. There's a lot of ways to take these knobs off. This is a Fender Extra Heavy Pick. And what I tend to like to do is just put it underneath a knob, turn the knob, I'm going to raise this up while I'm doing it, so i got to re reposition this. So I'm trying to do all this and have you see this in the camera for, too, as well. <clears throat> and once they come up a little bit, they, they just pull off. Let's uh, get these screws off. Don't ever force this. Uh, you always want to lay down a cloth. I prefer cardboard, but I don't think I have a piece handy at the moment. And by the way, while I talk about that, cereal boxes work great. <laughs> so if you cut up a cereal box, you can use that cardboard. It's just the right thickness. Anyway, uh, what you do want to be careful with is the ends of these screws are very sharp on most guitars. And if you can see this, the, these are very, very sharp and they will scratch your guitar if you're not careful. So don't lay them on the guitar. Now, if I pull this, pull this up, I lift it up. You notice this has the small pots. Um, it doesn't matter to me. Uh, some people that does bother and they want the bigger ones uh, These are the tiny ones. It's okay. Now what I want to do is put some cleaner in here And let me get a zoom in here so you can see uh, Pots have generally if not I've never seen it not have it. So they have a uh, open area which is over here by these uh, soldering tabs and Just give it a shot just very quick like that. Don't saturate these. And don't use the oil-based ones. This is alcohol-based, these cleaners. It evaporates very, very quickly. This is underneath, so I'm gonna turn it. Get it in there. And this one too is underneath, underneath from my point of view. And I wanna get in here somehow. Get into that spot. There we go. You can see it coming out over here. So you don't need much. Sometimes you can sneak some in here too, in these little holes. I'll do the other ones too while I'm here. Okay. 
And this one I, I won't do. Because it's over here somewhere. So nonetheless, uh, that's, uh, that's what you want to do. Uh, it's good to turn your knobs. I'll do this off camera. So when you start, you can have your knobs all as far as you can go uh, clockwise. Then give them a squirt. Then turn the knobs, you know, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And then turn them all the way over counterclockwise and then skirt these, uh, squirt them again, and then, you know, twist them again. And that should be enough to uh, uh, circulate the uh, cleaner. Just real quick, uh, when you lift up your pick guard, do it slowly. This is a ground wire. This goes through the guitar, through a little hole here, and it gets attached to the metal of this tremolo uh, uh, system. So it, this is really, doesn't give me much slack here. So if I came in here aggressively and lifted this up, I, I run the risk of, you know, breaking the solder on the, on the wire. So just do it slowly. The wires are, you know, fragile. And, and most, most people who do soldering work like this do have the wires, uh, you know, the quote unquote, the shortest distance possible. That helps reduce hum and, you know, gives you just a better, uh, shorter, um, you know, connection. So, uh, just, uh, again, word to the wise, be, be cautious with this kind of stuff. Now, before I put the uh, pit guard back on, I want to clean, I want to clean this, uh, this area. Lay this down over here. Remember those pit guard pickup screws. Oh boy. Remember those. This is this is remnants of the factory factory polish. Let's put this back on. Got to go under with the lip first. This is a number 10 metric. Finger tight. And then, let's see, about an eighth of a turn. You'll feel it. Not, do not over tighten these. Now, if anybody knows the answer to this, I'd be interested. Put it, put it in the comments, please. Why do guitars like this have a hole? Right here. Yeah, there's another one over here. And another one. Uh, get in the camera here. Down here. Why is that? All right, turn these all the way clockwise. Put your volume on, put your number where you know where the volume is up. I like to put it by the pickup screw. And I like to have them somewhat match. And sometimes I put the tones back a little bit so I can see it. Sometimes those stages are dark. <laughs> So, uh, 
and you need to help turn these. You can have them clear the pick guard a little bit if you want to. They'll turn easier and they won't be, you know, scratching the pick guard, if you will, or just, you know, getting resistance from the pick guard. These are up a hair, probably the thickness of a thin pick. And that's how they're going to stay. These turn really easy, by the way. Really, really easy. What I'd like to do now is oil these tuners. This is a number 10 metric. This is oil. Found this in the sewing machine department. Now I want to put petroleum jelly on the underside of these string trees. I'll do the same for the other one and put them back on. All right, since I have the strings off now, subject to fine tuning later, I am going to tighten the truss rod a bit. This is a number four metric. And I'll sight down the neck off camera and see how it looks. If you're doing this for the first time, you wanna be careful that you don't maul up the, uh, the outer edges of or the inner edges of the hole. So you, you just, I don't know how to tell you this, but you just don't want to go all the way over and then, you know, wiggle the thing out because you're probably going to, you know, uh, mess up the edges of the, uh, of the hole. And that's true really for all the guitars that have the truss rod adjustment up here. If I'm going to start putting tape on the guitar, I like to lay out the layers first. Now I'll go on and check the nut slot depth here. Again, uh, I put down 14 layers of tape. I'm using the first fret as my guide. Once I feel a hump right over here, a little resistance, and I know that the tape is above the first fret, that's when I stop. So I've counted them for you on, on this particular guitar. However, uh, I've seen guitars range anywhere from you know, 11, 12, all the way up to 15. So you have to just do it on a case-by-case -case basis. Your guitar may be different than this. This cardboard piece is here, so when I put saw blades in the uh, nut slot, it doesn't scratch the wood on the guitar. I move my 14 layers of tape up against the nut, taking out one of the small, small, small jeweler's files. You can find these online. Again, I don't Get paid for any of this promotion if you want to say this or plugging. You're getting the real deal from someone who uses these products. So there's very, very fine teeth on these. And of course you want it so the teeth paint are pointed down, downward, of course. Okay. So uh Once the tape, those of you who've seen this, seen me do this before, you'll, you'll know I've said this, that one broke. That happens a lot, by the way, so don't worry about that. They're very, very small. So when you see white marks on the tape, then please stop. You see some white marks here that this is done that not that not slot is done i'll just go ahead and do the rest of them uh you can probably see some white marks here certainly here 
This is the elongated one. <laughs> Didn't have to be that long. And uh, some of the other areas too. That means that the file is touching the top of the tape, which means that the nut slot depth is where it was when it's just a little above the first fret. All right, now we'll just disassemble this. You, sometimes you can keep these. I usually don't, but they can be reused. And my next step is to file this down, file the nut down. I'm going to stop there. I don't want to go down too far, obviously, because then the grooves are deep enough to hold the string. And I don't have much leeway to keep lowering the slots because of the way that I measured it uh, earlier. So I'm stopping there. If it needs any fine tuning after I put strings on, after a few you know, weeks of playing it or something, I'll, I'll take care of that at that time. Now, this is where a magnifying glass could come in handy. <clears throat> could. All right, this is a one and a half millimeter Allen wrench hex. Now, I'm going to turn these one turn, each one of these. They're generally set up fairly high on most guitars, not just these or other low end brands. Now these will be adjusted once I get the strings on. And one thing I notice is this is a high profile, um, you know, screw here. And that's going to dig into the palm of my hand. So I notice the D string, uh, excuse me, the G string is low, seems to be a lower profile. So what I'll do is I'll, do it right now. <laughs> Let me take this one out. You can get low profile bridge saddle screws is what they're called and these are metric I'm just saying so if you decide to get a low profile low profile one at some point you'll need to know that you're dealing with a metric metric system okay I'm leaving them there for now I'll leave my uh, tool handy because I will be coming back to use that. Now let's tackle the tremolo system. First thing you'll see on many of these guitars is that there's one screw per string and you don't need all those. You only need the two on the end. So I'm raising these up so that they are, so that the bottom of the screw is above the, the chrome plate. Now these are the two, the end ones here, that give you the fulcrum for, for the tremolo system on this type of guitar. Boy, that's down. That's too tight. Oh boy, that's too tight. Oh man, oh man. <clears throat> now if you loosen these too much, what will happen is the plate, when you use this, the plate will start lifting up around here and the screws, you know, it's just too high. So these should just touch the top of the chrome plate, the ones on the outside. And uh, 
I like to do this <laughs> obviously before I put the strings on because the strings definitely feed right over this. Don't want that. If these are, if each of these is down touching the plate, uh, what will happen is they, this will not rock back and forth uh, very easily. I've taken the tremolo arm out of the bag. I'm going to check this out, see how much play is in here. See that? That's play. Let me back out a bit here. There we go. Look, this is play. It's really undesirable. Now, the height of this is, you know, a little on the high side. There's other arms that can find that they, they, they ride a little lower here. But you also have to be careful that they don't wind up hitting your uh, jack on this side. This arm isn't too bad. It can be bent down a little bit because it. I still can see uh, here. I have enough. I seem to have enough clearance for the jack to go in here. So I, I have about a quarter of an inch or so, or three eighths of an inch uh, to spare. So I may. I may put this in the vise and, and bend this down a little bit. I'll just have to see. I'd also like to add that I have purchased. Uh, various tremolo arms in the secondary market made overseas i'm in the u.s so it's not they're not made here um and i'm just going to tell you just save your money they look good on the picture they're, they're really horrible frankly i don't know how else to say it the arms stick way up in the air and when you turn them down over here they will hit the, the jack, it sounds so counterintuitive. You think if it's high up in the air over here, it's gonna have a high clearance over here, but some of them don't uh, because they're not, they're not twisted properly. It's not just this angle. What it is is these other angles are, are can I say, they, they don't provide the, the proper clearance. So, you know, you look at the picture online, it looks like, oh yeah, that'll fit my guitar. Um, it, it, it just don't even waste your money with them, frankly. Unless you don't mind your bar being, you know, the height of a skyscraper. Now here's what I'm talking about. Forget about the play for just a second, but look at the plate right here. See how that dips down a little bit? That means that the screw, the fulcrum screws, are a little too high. So I want to bring this down a bit. Move the bar out of the way. Bring this down a hair, this one down too. A little at a time. Much better, much better. See, the plate is not rocking up and down. It's not, it's not lifting off the surface. That's what we like, beautiful. Again, the ones in the middle I'm not as concerned about. This one I can see is up a little high. Lowering is not gonna affect anything. And I like to make them so they all kind of match. Let me have to back some of these off a little bit. Some down, some up. I like my tremolo system to be uh, very, very comfortably loose. If I really wanted to get into this, <laughs> I would undo all this and redrill these holes. And I would probably wax these uh, the, the, the threads of the screws, but I'm not getting into that today. I mean, you can go on and on and on with the guitar setup or just about anything else in your life. And sometimes you just have to say, hmm, maybe another day. You don't have all the time in the world every single day. So there we go. Okay, so this part is, it seems to be okay. Uh, now, before I put the strings on, before I put the strings on, I want to, let me turn the guitar around. I want to address this fretboard because it's, it's really looking dry. Again, I don't know what kind of wood this is. And I don't really care. <laughs> you know, years ago when one of the major guitar companies uh, had a problem getting some of their, their wood for their fretboards, they changed to other materials. Oh, man, everybody's making a big stink of it. I mean, really, it doesn't matter. Does it really matter? And, you know, there's acrylic fretboards and everything else. So, you know, everyone's got something to say. 
when you're tapping, when you're fingering the string, your, your finger is actually up in the air. It's not even touching the fretboard. If it is touching your fretboard, you probably your frets are probably too low. I'm gonna put some lemon oil on here. Today I'm using a tissue. Probably have a little more than I usually do here. One little drop will go the whole way, unless this fretboard absorbs it like I've never seen before which may happen. Well, the tissue did pick up some, I don't know, residual dye maybe. This is really nothing. It's nothing on here. It always, lemon oil always looks like it's something. And I, I don't put it on often at all. I put new strings on, roughed out the tuning. And see this large gap here? That means that these screws are too far this way. So let me tighten them up. A little better, getting a little better. Let's do some more. Now it's important after every adjustment, you retune the guitar. Because what you're doing is, look how much better that looks. If you don't retune it, your, your uh, tension is not going to be correct. So then when you finally do get around to tuning it, this will be off. If you're going to tighten the screws, you're pulling this down so the string should be sharp. Now these are new strings and they're going to stretch for a while. But this is much better, obviously. And I think I'll keep it like that. Some people don't like a space here, right under here between the chrome piece and the top of the guitar. Some people like it down more. Um, I've seen very few players with, that keep it up high. But there probably are some out there that do that. Very easy. Very nice. Now I just do the string height. And I'll do that here at the bridge. And this will affect it a little bit, the tremolo system. But uh, these strings are just, they're just too high for me. So I have already straightened the neck out. So the, the last, then I've adjusted the nut. So the last issue is the, the, the saddles, the height of the strings on the saddles. Now, this is gonna have a dramatic impact. I already did them once, right? And that was two times. I'm looking at the height of the string right over here just to get a rough idea. Now, what did I say? I did it three times. Let's do it four times. Four times from the beginning of when I got the guitar. Five times. Ooh, six times. <laughs> okay. I know what's gonna happen. This, this little screw here, the bridge pin, is gonna be sticking up higher and higher and higher, and it's gonna be a little rough on the palm of the hand. Tighten the claw about 10 times, uh, 10, 10 loose turns, uh, each screw, each screw. So uh, it seems to be okay right now. I think I need to raise the D a little bit now. <laughs> Reason is, uh, your fretboard has a curve to it. Most guitars do. Some are very flat, some of them are quite arched. Um, so what you want to do is you want to try to get the string heights to follow along that radius of your fretboard. So I, I now, I do know that if you, if you, if you did this to all the same height, what would happen is these are all, this is a flat, <laughs> this is all flat then, right? Well, then the strings in the center, if there's a hump in your neck and there probably is a slight curve, then uh, the G and the D string in particular are going to start buzzing because the strings are flapping onto the fretboard. So they need to be raised a little bit to compensate for the arc in the uh, fretboard. That's called play in the tremolo arm. I've tried various methods over the years. And I'll tell you that Teflon tape does not work. Teflon tape gets all coiled up and shredded in the threads. It doesn't work. I've tried other things too, but the best uh, thing I have 
to offer is the springs from Fender. Just drop them in there, put your arm on. Now, the thing that people get worried about with this is when they take the arm out, the screw will fall out. So, look, just get a piece of tape. Look at this, nothing, no play, nothing. So let me just stop here, look. And I'm not even down, I got threads to go. Right here. Now, if some people want this more loose, then you can either take the spring out and you know crush it down with a pair of pliers or maybe even cut it if you're so inclined. Um, I'm, I'm not that picky. <laughs> I don't really care. I'm gonna move my arm where I want it to be anyway, so I don't really like it when they flop around. That's just me. Some guys like that flying around. I, I don't care for that. So I'll put the plate back on in the back and I'll give the guitar a polish and take it for a test play. Here's a measurement you may find useful. I've put the one inch mark over here on the edge because this ruler is a little odd on the end here. So let's go with the tried and true. There's one inch uh, right on the edge. So where are we? We're at the halfway point, uh, half inch point. So if you want to rough out uh, your tremolo system, uh, try to go for half inch and then start from there and see what happens. Now I did put a long uh, ruler, metal ruler on the fretboard and I noticed it was rocking right around the 12th fret. So I went ahead and strung it up anyway, and yep, it's the 12th fret. So I think the 13th fret is, is high, and up in here in this region, the, it feels like the frets are, are higher uh, than, down, than down here. Now, it's not because there's a lip in, in the neck. You know, sometimes people might want to point that out. That's not the case here. Uh, because it's only on this one side. It's not over on this side. It's not over on the lower strings. So I'm going to file down the frets and even them up. Smooth. They, they are smooth, though. That's what's kind of interesting about it. They, they're very smooth. There's no rough spots on these frets. But maybe, you know, maybe with weather conditions and shipping, maybe these are not, you know, in, in the slot in a, in a manner that keeps them firm. You know who knows if I if I finger the uh, the B string 12th fret here, you'll definitely will hear that it's not as clear as the the notes down below it. Let's just check the frets. If there's any outstanding high ones. Yeah, the first fret seems high. Piece of cardboard I've cut out. Let's loosen the strings and, sit and pull them aside.
helps you out. See you later.